Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. We're like, Tim, why don't you move closer? He's like, no, I love my hometown. You don't know unless you're from there. Mm-hmm. B-Town till I die. B-Town for life, yo. That's what Tim always says when he comes in. Mm-hmm. Dan goes in, he's like, give me the air, f- Jordan. Tim goes in, he's like, give me the nurses. <laughs> give me the nurse, Jordan. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wish I remembered them all. They just went through a huge reno. It's beautiful now. <laughs> If you're in the Windsor area, mm-hmm. let's go to Windsor to the Devonshire. I understand we can get a discount on Air Jordans at the Foot Locker. You're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast. Yes. We're in. Uh, hello. We're into February. February. That means winter is over. Well, today's temperature would certainly uh, support that theory. It was gorgeous in Toronto. Not so much in other parts of the country, and we apologize for that. Hey, potential advertiser, since we don't have one, this could be your delicious beverage being poured into our cups. Each and every podcast. Each and every one. See, I have no idea if if our show is, is being... Uh, shopped around our podcast oh, yeah. every day. Our guys are cold calling. Just people. hitting the pavement, guys. Great podcast, <laughs> number one in Canada. Who wants to sponsor it? That's what people are doing here. That's what people are doing during the day at TSA. And it's well known if you are an advertiser on our podcast, every listener buys at least one, if not twenty, of your products. Well, I go back to the T Max. Crazy. Uh, the T Max heat socks. I mean, we had them for, what, a day? One podcast? And people still ask us about the T-Max. Yeah, people are walking through uh, Mark's. They sent me pictures of T-Max socks. I am so fired up. Yeah. So get on it, T-Max heat socks. I don't know. Um, So that was last week's podcast. We were in our television studio uh, because of the uh, inclement weather and all that. Uh, Christoph, uh, I, I thought that sounded okay, but... Not as good as when we're here in the radio studio. Uh, yeah, there was a couple t- uh, technical issues with the audio there. Yeah, because we have such tiny little microphones over there. Teeny they, tiny. They pick up a lot of the room noise, and the level just came in pretty low. So Right. Camera guy, camera guy Glenn was f***ing one of the other camera guys while we were doing the pod, and you could pick up that audio. Ambiance. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but cameraman Glenn was f***ing someone. Um, Super Bowl went last night. Boy, that was sh- You know how bad the game was? Worst Super Bowl ever. I did an online course for... Because you, you work here, you get sent online courses and stuff that you've got to do for HR well, reasons. You do, not me. <laughs> you... <laughs> and so I did it during the game, and I didn't miss a single thing. I was just like, oh, nothing going punt. Okay, they punted again. Uh, they punted like 10 times in a row. <laughs> oh, God. It was uh, it was really, really bad. It was a really bad game. Stoff, what did you do for the game? Uh, stayed home. Watched it at home. Bet the under. Good night. Nice yeah. work betting the under. You nice. listened to Mike Garofolo last week. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he kept Toolsy in the money. Because Toolsy would have for sure thrown That's right. half his mortgage down on the over. He... Uh... His number was pretty close to the total, but he said, no, it's going to be a chess match for the, the first quarter. Then they might open up a little. It was a chess match the entire game. Yeah. Is that what you call it? It was just boring. <laughs> I know. But again, we talked about this in the in the office with our producers. There's some people saying, that's a real football game fought in the drenches. Sorry you can't appreciate a defensive battle. Maybe you don't really like the sport. Yeah. people. Those are the people that go to a hockey game. Yes. One nothing. It's fine. Like what you like. It's just difficult to really get into it when there's not a little bit of offense. Just something for the for the average fan to sink their teeth into. Oh, this fight is going to the scorecards. Bravo. Oh, that's what I wanted. Yeah, I. It's too bad. It's too bad because it sucked, and the halftime show was hot garbage. Yeah. Like, who's, whose idea was that? They should be fired. 
Travis Scott was the best part because he played a song that's actually been made in the last 10 years. Well, didn't my wife told me that because uh, she loves her pop music. As we all do. My wife my told wife. me. She said that Maroon 5 had a big hit this past summer. Like a huge hit that Cardi B was on or something. So I don't know if that was one of the songs they sang. I want to sex you up. It was a cover of Color Me Bad's I Want to Sex You Up. Exactly. And it was a huge hit. That's what she said. I don't know. I don't listen to the top 40s. Um, but anyway, it was just awful. God, it was bad. And one of the uh, the prop bets was if Adam Levine would take off his shirt at some point. So if he took that bet, you're a winner. Well, and you see why. You know, he, they were like, this thing is totally going pear-shaped. Here's what we need to do. We've got Levine shirtless. That's our only trump card. So they must have a discussion. So they, they rehearsed this all week. So that's not a surprise. Well, I wonder if anyone else in the band's like, can, can I? He is the band. <laughs> it's Maroon 1 plus 4. By the way, how many how many sportscasters made the Maroon 5, Patriots 3, Rams 0 joke yesterday? A thousand sportscasters? <laughs> Holy sh**, guys. Um, but yeah, no, it's Levine. First of all, would the band still even be popular if Adam Levine wasn't on The Voice? Is that the show? The Voice? No. I don't think so. They, like, started in the 90s. So he they owe everything to him. So yeah. sorry. I mean, he... If they're like, you know what, Adam, I, I want to play a couple of different tracks on our concert tonight. Guys, I, I don't know if I re- if you're aware of anything, but I'm Adam Levine, <laughs> and I am this band. So here's the set list, and here's what you guys are going to need to play. Mr. Levine, can I also disrobe? No. No, you're hideous. <laughs> I, someone made a point in his California tattoo. No. When are you going to get an, a Peterborough tattoo like that, Tulsi? Right I, across your torso just says Peter, bro. I have one at the top of my butt crack. Tramp really? Stuff. Like a trans and it just says Peter, bro? Yeah. Hey, what the f***? <laughs> Ladies like that, huh? <laughs> you get down on all fours? Hey, take a look back there. Hey, I'll fix your pipes. Take a look what I got back there. It's a tat. Want to take a closer look? Um... Yeah, so it was, uh, it was a boring football game. Um, we pigged out here at the uh, the Sports Center offices. Dan brought in some delicious chili, and um, it was a huge hit. Really yummy. Your and wife then, uh, made some cornbread. You also yeah. brought in bread. You bought brought sour cream. Um, Sarita, who works on our show, brought cookies. Dwayne, who works on our show, brought Timbits. Uh, and then it, if you've got food sitting around, you know the the case. You walk by and you're like, yeah, I'll nibble a little bit. Oh, you you feel you ate too much. Oh, I had, a, the banana hot dog. I had a layer of chili, layer of cookies. Then yeah. I had a yerba mate in there. Then I'm like, okay, I'll have some more chili, it was some more good. cookies. Then it's just, it was. It the men feed my mouth. It was all good. It was all yummy. Oatmeal raisin cookies, your favorite. There was some of those. They were delicious. Oh man, they were tasty. Oatmeal raisin. That's one of my favorite types of cookies. Yeah, uh, Laurent Duvarney Tardif was our guest uh, on the show. What a great guy. Yeah, he could have brought some bakery items. He's a, a member of the Kansas City Chiefs, Canadian, went to McGill, and he's a doctor. Yeah, medical doctor, uh, graduated from McGill. And uh, so we're going to have him on one of these future podcasts. We're going to talk but, all about his life in KC and Montreal. You shook his hand, uh, baseball mitt hand. Yeah, like Rod Smith. <laughs> like... Oh, uh, by the way, last week I re- I was a guest on Richard Krause, who's a CTV's film critic, has a, a show called Pop Life. And I was a guest, a part of the roundtable last week. So I come in, of course, I don't have a parking spot here because we just didn't ask for one because we park at night. There's no one here. But if I have to come during the day, i got to find somewhere to park. Well, luckily, Duthie was gone. Duthie's our guest on the podcast today, by the way. So we'll ask him about this, if I'm allowed to do this. And I'll just do it anyway. But he wasn't there, so I parked in his parking spot. And as I'm pulling into his parking spot, uh, a big pickup truck parks right next to me. And I look over, and who is it? It's Rod Smith. Oh, wow. So he gets out. I mean, it's just such a treat for Dan and I. Rod is our favorite person ever. And and it's such a treat when we see him. Just He makes my whole day. Just just his presence. He's such a, a wonderful, jovial guy and a great broadcaster. And he comes up, and he asks me about my 
my newborn son, and we have a great chat. And then he says, all right, I've got to get back in the truck. Time to shave. <laughs> what? He hadn't shaved yet for his on-air shift so at he, Sports Center. So he, he had an electric razor in there. Just plugged into the truck. Just plug her in and uh, start shaving. Dude, no time to shave if you're Rod at home. Got stuff to do. Things going on. Time to shave. Ladies to talk to. So uh, quick shave before you head in to work. What a legend. Uh, let's talk about, uh, speaking of broadcasting, Dan, you brought in a special treat this week. Very special treat. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, I found, again, going through stuff in my basement because I don't have much to do. Um, and I found an old DVD and it said demo. Uh, so we couldn't find anywhere to play it. Finally, Christoph, how did you manage to get this off of there? Uh, I, the only place this would work for some reason was in my PlayStation 4. Uh, so I... <laughs> I actually had to tape the uh, screen with my phone. So, we, so the quality well, might not be the best, but sorry about that. it we captures work, the essence. We work in a place in which we have all this technology. We have all these uh, broadcasting capabilities, yet it's impossible. Like, I found a VCR tape. No one's like, uh, I don't know. Are you, I, don't well, know. I don't know if it was the particular DVD you gave me, because that wouldn't work in any computer or anything hmm. I could put it into except for the PS4. For and we reason. still haven't found a way to dump down cassettes to digital. Well, I, I was given some address downtown we would yeah. have to physically go to. <laughs> yeah, it I, might be someone's house. I'm no, there sure. there is a place um, just south of the Queensway near Kipling that does it. It's like a whole digital oh, thing. Oh, so it's not a setup. No, it's real. <laughs> right. It's real, yeah. I Because I digitized some stuff that I'm going to bring in next week. Awesome. For you. Now, how about this? What if I get you know the old just kiss. just take it to this place. I'll tell you where it is. But here's the thing: there's like twenty tapes. Well, just get them all done. You work. No. Nah. Um, now, can't you use a cord from like the headphone jack in oh, one of those gosh. handheld cassette players and plug it into something? Anyway, I'll I try. suppose so. We okay. can try that. Anyway, let's. Uh, so this is a demo. See, you're saying all these things, but you're not going to do it. <laughs> Yes, we all you're know going that. To, you're going to ask someone else to do your work for I you. I just hope if I put the words out into the universe, it'll happen. Right, right. Okay. There's so, Nancy Newman. She's still uh, she's on TSN right now. She used to be Nancy Zinos on TSN. She's tr- Torontonian. Oh, really? She used to be on CNN, and now she's on MSG Network. Anyway, sorry, Tulsi. Here we go. This is exciting. You're um, so this is my first real broadcast job uh, when I worked in Fort McMurray, and I did play-by-play for the Fort McMurray Oil Barons. I started doing reports for CFRN in Edmonton. I'd get paid $100 per story, and I think if it was a stand-up, which means I appear in the story, it was like 150 So this, oh, is, one of the, this is one of those stories in which Huge. I... I Huge. sent uh, down on the bus. I had to get it on the Greyhound bus to Edmonton, and then they aired it. Welcome to the Center Auto Wash. The following wash bays are available. With eight wash bays and one drive through wash, the City Center Auto Wash is looking to clean up Fort McMurray. Okay, stop right there. I admit it. The opening of a car wash isn't what you'd call a newsworthy event. Just give me pause this car here. Wash is different. Holy crap, nerd. I'm wearing cargo brown cargo pants. And is that like a CFRN pullover? CFRN uh, fleece. And did you just get out of bed? Like, did you think, should I maybe clean myself up a bit? It's a car wash story. So the reason for the story is, again, so I'm like, I, I need the money. I need to come up with a story. So I just would... I said, a new car wash open, and they wash dogs there too. So uh, that's 150 bucks. All right, let's let's check out more of it. <laughs> Besides, giving the auto a wash, you can also clean Fido out back. The center is home to the city's first ever doggy wash. I thought it was weird, but oh well, maybe it works. I don't know. I've never been to one. First, most people thought it was a crazy idea. But uh, now people are starting to think, that's not a bad idea at all. This is Danny's first visit to the wash. Did you think it a bit odd when you first heard Dottie Wash? No, not actually. You're not right on. That's perfect. You <laughs> should have something like this a long time ago. Each stainless steel tub is equipped with shampoo, conditioner, and even a blow dryer. I love this the idea. get clean. Instead of just rolling in the mud and dirty water to get clean, it's better than... 
just doing that. And whenever people talk about uh, my wash, they're talking about my dog wash. They don't really care about what it does for cars. They care about the dogs. The big question is, how do the pooches like it? How, how did you like it? Interviewing dogs here. Yeah, holding up a, a microphone up to a dog's snout. The dogs are non-committal at this point, but it's something that'll surely grow on them. As for being dirty, canines aren't the only culprits. <laughs> Daniel Tool, CFRN News. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Just, that's something that uh, oh. they stress concern. They said oh, look at this. Okay, okay hold on. Let's can we stop this right here? Dollar. Oh, my God. Oh, what are you, 11? Jesus Wait till Christ. who they're about to pan to I'm um, interviewing here. Oh, my God. Okay. Get ready for this review. This is amazing. I wish. See, I, I worry. Okay, no. Let's first talk about the dog wash story. Okay. That was pretty well, good. Uh, they stress concern. Oh, they said oh, you, you put more money toward. Let's talk about this dog wash thing. Uh, good story. Clever. Thank you. I think there's a. it makes sense that they, they went with that. And you did a nice walk and talk in the car wash. That's a classic walk and talk on cam. And it ended on my CFRN vehicle being very dirty. And that's when I said, it's not the only thing. The dogs aren't the only thing that are dirty. <laughs> so over, now did this, did that story land you your gig in Vancouver? No. Um, I did a year of that. So just literally cut my teeth figuring out that stuff. I got that job. I think I've told the story before. Because the opening came up and they said, oh, do you know how to shoot your own stuff? I said, ah, of course. Which was <laughs> I'd never held a camera in my life. So I would send them footage and they're like, it's all blue. And um, so that means the camera hasn't been white balanced. I'm like, oh, my old camera was different. Yeah, I'm sure they... I'm sure they were like, ooh, I, I'm sure he's on the up and up. Poor guy. And um, He's using a new camera that won't white balance. One of the guys oh, man. that hired me, um, Steve Hogel. We saw him at the golf tournament in Saskatoon. That's right. Um, I mentioned that to him. He said, yeah, week in, we knew that you were yeah, lying. They, of course <laughs> they did. It's the worst lie ever. <laughs> yeah. But I have to say, man, you look so young here. Now, were you always rocking glasses? We, I should mention, Dan's rocking spectacles in this story. And I like the idea. Now, you've had LASIK. Yes. But I love the idea of you wearing glasses now on air, but with no lenses. Sort of a cool no-lens glasses look. What do you think of that idea? That could be your signature look. Like Sally, Jesse, Jesse, Raphael. They could all be red frames. I, at one point, was going to wear glasses. This is before we went to the States. And I uh, sent a note to our, our boss, Mark Millier, and he said, okay, well, you got to go get a bunch, and we've got to see how they look on camera. And then once you wear them, you're always wearing them. I'm like, what? I'm not doing that. Seems like too much work. Again, you throw things out into the universe, <laughs> hoping that someone will bring you a series of glasses. The lens crafter people <laughs> right. will just show up. Um, okay, so let's see more so of this. So this, this is an interview, and I think we only have like a second of it, but uh, okay. wait till the reveal of the person Ooh. I am interviewing. Okay. Here we go. I'm excited. That's something that uh, they stress concern. They said if you, you put more money towards the debt, then the Canadian dollar would have gone up a lot more. Uh, that's right, Dan. All of these things... Stockwell Day. Whoa. And I love how he said, that's right, Dan. Right. Stockwell Day, he had the infamous... Um, uh, the arrive, <laughs> arrival at a, his own news conference on a jet on a ski. Jet ski yes. because he had been parachuted in as a candidate in like Summerland or Peachland, somewhere in the Okanagan. So that was his way of showing up. What's Stock doing now? What's uh, I've got a computer that can tell me that. He was a man. He was a rising star. He was supposed to be the PM. Yeah, he was at the old Reform Party. Oh. Preston Manning? What's Preston, Preston up to? Is he dead? I went. Is what? Preston gone? Uh, I'll, I'll look are, we should do a separate podcast where we just name people and be like, are they dead? <laughs> um, I think Preston might still be gone. Alive. No, I think Preston's still. live? Yeah. We should get him on the pod next week. Preston, great to have you on. Got to be honest, we thought you were dead. So 2011 looks like Stockwell Day <laughs> stepped away from politics. <laughs> He continues to appear on occasion as a political panelist on CBC News Network's Power in Politics. Oh, that would be interesting to just see him now, see what he looks like. 
Day also currently holds a position on the board of directors of Talus. Oh, there you oh, go. Of course he does. And yeah. the China <laughs> Business Council. Oh, of course he does, yeah. You know, oh, God. Don't get me started on these politicians. The worst is the pensions. Just get rid of all of them. Put all that money back into schools. Boom. On right for PM. Who is I look at? Who's the leader of the Reform Party again? Preston that? Manning. Preston Manning. Yeah, I went and saw him speak at uh, in Peterborough once. Why? Uh, I was into politics at the time, I guess. Toolsy had a political uh, leaning at one point. You were into. Were you leaning a little bit right, or yes. were you hanging right? <laughs> I was just interested in it all. Um, he was, uh, he's 76. He's still alive. Stuff. let's try to get Preston Manning on the show next week. I sincerely believe we could do it. And my first question will be, are you alive? <laughs> he kind of looks like Mr. Dress Up now. Yeah, he always kind of had that kind of look, didn't he? Could Preston Manning speak French? No chance. No chance he could. Tulsi, I want to take it back a little bit to your interest in politics. Why can't we revive that a little bit and get you running uh, federally? I'd love to see you in the House of Commons. Um, when we get fired or when we're finished. Should be any day now. Our broadcast careers. Yeah, I'm going to run for mayor or do something like that. Really, eh? You're going to do that? Well, I yeah. sounded very Canadian. Really, eh? <laughs> yeah, why not? I love, why did you do it now? I always wanted to get in there and cause some <laughs> I'm the f***ing mayor. Well, why don't you start by running for mayor of Newcastle? <laughs> they don't have a... It's a mayor of the region. All right. Why don't you run for mayor Again, of the region? Because of our jobs, if I ran for anything now, yeah. you have to step away from your job. Oh. Because we're in the public. Oh, we're in the, the media or something? You yeah. okay, can't do that anymore? No, no. Even for the mayor of Tiny Orono? There's no mayor there either. But you'd be... Mayor of that area. Unofficially. Perfect. And then you move everything to Orono. You move all the infrastructure, everything you take away from the other communities. <laughs> you put it into Orono. And don't don't explain it. Just be like, I'm the f mayor. I'll make the decisions. Well, I would get down to the, the bottom of where the money went from that movie we talked about, Polar, that was shot, some of it, in Orono. They pay money for shooting rights. Sure. Where's that scratch going? Yeah, you ask around town, they're like, good question, I don't know. You know what we didn't talk about in terms of the Super Bowl is the fact that we were on right after the Super Bowl on CTV. That was, uh, and it was our highest rated show since we've returned to Canada. It was, uh, it was awesome. I mean, we just crushed it. We provided insight, analysis. And the guy who joined us on that show, James Duthie, is going to be joining us here. So he... He flies back from Atlanta. I'm shocked he's working tonight. Me no chance. Like, what are the odds? Usually it'd be Andy Petrillo or Tessa Bonham would be hosting the Leaf broadcast. What what reason? We got that might be our first question. What happened? You normally normally he would get at least two weeks off after a gig like this. <laughs> Just to decompress, maybe go back down to the Turks. I can't wait till you head to the Turks with the Duthies. If he's paying, I'm going. No, you guys split the bill. No. Ooh. No chance? No. <laughs> he sent me the prices of the places he goes, you me not going. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You work. Mm. I <laughs> lose a lot of that money each month. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. Hey, stop. I lost it all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop. Hello, are you there? Yeah, oh. present. <laughs> <laughs> what was this story? We mentioned last week how my pipes were frozen. You yeah. Found a story in which a oh, guy. Oh, yeah. What's this? Blew uh, up yeah, his house? I got a. Let me pull that up here. He burned his house down, I believe. <laughs> uh, well, this happened in I Sherbrooke, should laugh. PI. I should laugh. That's the kind of thing I would do. The pipes aren't frozen then. No, the house is gone. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, a man tried to thaw frozen pipes with a blowtorch Saturday afternoon. Uh, Fire Chief Jim, Jim Peters said the man and his wife and the two dogs got out okay. The Oof. cat is believed to be safe. 
<laughs> and uh, 55 firefighters, four hours. Wow. 55 firefighters? On scene for four hours and unlikely that the house can be salvaged. Wow. This... Toolsy, that could have happened to you if you tried to torch on your frozen pipes. So that's what not to do. We had a big thaw, so we're good. My pipes are back in business. <laughs> You're laying pipe all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Have uh, you ever thought, did you, did you ever for a second consider getting out the old blowtorch? Hell and, no, because uh, I don't know where the pipes are. <laughs> That'd be great. Just you on the side of the house, just <laughs> waving your arm with a blowtorch, looking for something randomly. Yeah, that's no fun. Hey, uh, James Duthie is our guest, and we're thrilled to have him here. James Duthie, come on in here. James, we were just saying, come on right in the O-Dog seat here, my friend. Yeah, we're baffled that you're here. Come on over here. and. Uh, How are you? Uh, I'm just holding up my hand. We thought you'd have three weeks off it. after hosting the Super Bowl. I'm Good. leaving for uh, Turks and Caicos tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. That's what we just said. That's what we just said. Yeah. We knew you would be. I go great. do one a month. It's great to have you here, my friend. See, what I do, I trick everybody. I do something like the Super Bowl and then come back and everybody goes, wow, that guy never... Never stops working, and then I saw that allows me to take a week off every month. <laughs> because you came back and worked. Yeah, you worked two after. hard days in a row, and that impresses people. And then you. We gotta figure it. We it. really need to figure things out. Yeah, we we've it. never been able to do it. Yeah. We're here. Every I've been holding night. my hand You're out the whole night. time. You guys work James like two hand. and a half hour shifts. I didn't know what you were doing. There it is. Uh, how is Atlanta? <laughs> had you ever been to Atlanta? I had been for the NHL All Star Game years ago. Whew. That was a time. Who was the musical act at the NHL All-Star Game? Do you remember? I want to say Alanis Morissette. Atlanta? And no, I have no idea. Hmm. Do you know Drake? Drake was the NHL All-Star Game act uh, in Ottawa. What year was that? Uh, 11, 10, 12. Okay. I, I went to that. That's, that's a pretty good that. guess. That's a blur to me. Hmm. That's a pretty yeah, good guess. That's your hometown. He was big. Yeah. I, I don't... The re- only recollection I have was... Uh, there was an after party at the All Star Game at a bowling alley, and Joe Thornton has this entourage of childhood buddies from St. Thomas. And there's one little guy that they they pick on. He's kind of like their who is the guy in Entourage? Turtle. turtle. He's their turtle. He's and their they, weed roller. And that night they shaved half his head. Oh no! Wow. Yeah. That poor that's poor all, fella. That's all I remember from that All Star Game. I'd love to see entirely. a whole show about that guy, <laughs> Joe Thornton's tiny friend. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> That'd be the name of the show. Streaming on Crave. Yeah. Atlanta, you a fan? And one of our one of our former bosses texting me at three a.m. because he was stuck somewhere. <laughs> That's funny. Did that happen yesterday again? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. So, so how was the game for you? Because it was terrible for everyone. It was terrible. Yeah. Look, it was terrible. I've been the one thing I've always said about the Patriots is, uh, even though we we're, we're all kind of sick of them, unless you love the Patriots, their Super Bowls are always great. Yeah, right? they're yeah. always nice. Well, the last one was incredible. Well, not the Eagles, but the one before. But oh think of them God. all. The two Giants games came down to the very end. The yeah. Seahawks thing we should yeah. have run Marshawn Lynch. The Falcons twenty eight three last year to me was the most entertaining Super Bowl I've ever seen. And so you expect the expectations, and it was just, it was it was bad. It was it was the worst one I've ever seen. It was the worst Super Bowl ever. There's no other way. The lowest to put scoring it. Super Bowl ever for sure. Yeah, it was terrible. So and people ask me, was it more exciting? It's I guess it's always more exciting when you're there, especially when you can drink. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, yeah, beverages and you know it was all Patriots fans, and they were all completely loaded. How is that stadium? Uh, it was really nice, but Minneapolis uh, last year was blew me away. So I, I guess I'm kind of jaded, but this is cool. They have a 360 scoreboard. Saw you can kind of see around. it on TV. It looked very cool. You know, you guys talk about a lot of like bathroom stuff on the show, right? No, I'm a faithful not listener. as much anymore. Well, a lot we? of penis, a lot of bathroom, right? Well, maybe. Why they have cool bathrooms? I, we've kind of we've kind of grown up. No, it's just a, a thing I noticed last night, uh, and it's particularly at football games. Um, that the percentage of men who wash their hands after they urinate at an NFL game, particularly a Super Bowl, is roughly around 3%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Like Jabari Greer and I were urinating together somewhat. Sure. And go, go on. we were the only two in a you know, five-minute span that I was in that washroom where 150 men went through that washed yeah. our hands. Here's, here's I, my I one. think there's like an unspoken we're, thing we're among disgusting football, species. Players, football fans. Yeah, it, men are gross. If men are with other men, it's sort of like, eh, 
If I don't tell, you don't tell. Here's the one place I don't do it, and you know why? The one place you don't wash your hands? At Toronto Blue Jays games, because that that water in the bathrooms is so f- cold that it gives me a chill. So you go back. It's ice cold water. So you just so walk you go around back. and urinate. You share a bag of popcorn with your two gorgeous daughters with your urine hands. You, t- you take your big mitts onto a hot dog and you wrap them around <laughs> that dog and then you wolf it down. Look, at surgeons are smart guys, right? Surgeons <laughs> are our smartest people. They wash their hands thoroughly. Yeah. So we all should. That was. I heard that thing. the um, Arthur Blank uh, did the thing where it's like five dollars for a hot dog and a and a pop or something. Like the concession prices oh, yeah, are really, really cheap. Ridiculous. Yeah. I had what did I buy from the concessions? Chicken tacos. Bought chicken tacos. They were six bucks. It's pretty good. That's nice. You know, thinking of the the Beers little guys. We're good. I mean, compared to the, how much we get ripped off. No, it was good. Like Atlanta. Eh, I'll say this. Like. People are super nice. Maybe it's the South. Mm. Uh, so it was good, but uh, hung out a lot in the CNN building. I was looking for Caitlin Collins, my TV crush. Mm. I didn't see her. Did you go to a, a tour of the Coca Cola? you were going to say uh, Cuomo. Cuomo. Didn't see yeah, my TV crush. <laughs> Cuomo. Cuomo. He's got like a tight shot of his head the entire hour. You guys should do that. You should we screw, do. Screw, that is our no, show. No, screw the set and just do side by side. <laughs> Really close shots of your head. But the thing the is, James, show. our show, it, our our uh, one shots are way tighter than the Sports Center ones. Like the Sports Center ones, they're kind of far back. It's forgiving somewhat. Same with you when you're hosting on NHL and TSN. It's a little more forgiving. I know. Well, Ours are it's like It's in my right contract up there. because I, no one wants to see it. Uh, no one wants to see us. It's disgusting. I mean, Last week, someone sent me a picture of. Two hairs sticking up on my head. That's how tight the shot was. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is closer on yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, did you tour the Coca Cola? No, oh, I didn't. That'd be I, you guys, I, I disappointed. Uh, I was a disappointment because you probably had me on thinking I'd have all these great stories about how I got loaded and you know hung out with Travis Scott or something. I went to one good party. Okay. Well, Tuesday night, the media party was at the aquarium, and uh, that was good. Uh, they had you know this big ass fish. What do they call them? Whale sharks? Sure. Sure, uh, James. Whale sharks. If you followed my Instagram story. <laughs> and uh, what else oh, did that I was do? Wolfgang Puck served you food. Wolfgang Puck was serving the Wolfgang Puck food. One thing I wanted to ask you about that, though, and this is always kind of an awkward situation. So you see Wolfgang Puck. Mm-hmm. Did you take out your phone as Wolfgang Puck was serving you food and shoot Wolfgang Puck <laughs> with your phone? Like yes. Right at, yeah, okay. So that's kind of what I thought you so did. So I'm in line. Hey, Wolfgang Puck. I love the Wolfgang Puck food. So then I get about fifth in line, and uh, I think it was Mark Millett, or Dennis, our producer. Dennis said, hey, it's Wolfgang Puck serving the Wolfgang Puck food. <laughs> that's how he so I had a few seconds. I had a few Wolfgang seconds, Puck. pull out the phone, and do a little pan up to, to Wolfgang Puck. And he's used to it. He Jesse Palmer was there. He's an attractive man. <laughs> Good guy. Yeah. What's he doing now? He hosts a show called uh, Daily Mail TV, one of those syndicated inside edition type programs. As a matter of fact, he got in trouble last week because Nicki Minaj was uh, all, I guess they did a report on the show. This is so funny about Nicki Minaj uh, has a, a boyfriend who's been abusive or something in the past and her brother's been abusive. And so they reported it on the show and Nicki Minaj was all upset. And so she lashed out at Jesse Palmer. Right. And the funny thing is she hashtagged Jesse Palmer and then she hashtagged Arnold Palmer. Oh, so I think she believes that Jesse Palmer is Arnold Palmer's son. Gosh, he wishes. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> That's really weird. No, so he's a big he's a big deal. I think Jesse like he was almost in running for the uh, he was in the running for the Kelly and uh, Regis. That's now Kelly and uh, Seacrest show. Now he also is he on Good Morning America? Or? No, he left that to oh, do this that. Daily Mail. I think it's probably Cha-Ching. It's more money. Daily Mail, big syndicated okay. show. Okay. You know, one of those syndicated. I wonder shows. why he was doing the syndicated because I thought, well, he seemed to be doing too much. Like that's a lot because he yeah. does college football for ESPN. He's very good. You know, he's he's, he's honestly such a good one of the best broadcasters I've ever seen. He's a natural and deathly handsome. Yeah, you're obsessed with his look. Well, I know it's because my wife. Every female yeah. I know is tech. No, including like the one I have relations with, mm. X, and is like, hey, could you get me a shot of Jesse? That is a bit weird. Yeah, it's <laughs> a little she freak. Does that. Can't they just Google image it? Um, mm, hey, getting back to, to <laughs> Kaching, <laughs> what do you think? Can I come to the next Super Bowl? You want to bring me to the next Super Bowl? I'm sure. Sure, honey, you want to come along? Is Jesse going to be there? No, you never want to bring the wives to What's the Super Bowl. Wolfgang Puck's. Uh, What's he pocketing from that? He's getting 50 for that? <laughs> for a, for a <laughs> like, night there? That's yeah. a classic toolsy question. Uh, I guess he's an Atlanta boy, so he's probably... Is he? 
Yeah, I'm he's not doing that for free. He's an Austrian guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Atlanta born and raised, a puckster. <laughs> Marietta, Georgia's own. Well, I mean, he lives born there and now. Raised. He li- I mean, he lives in, in California. He lives in L.A. Oh, <laughs> somebody told me that Wolfgang Puck lived there. Maybe like his first restaurant was there or something? I don't know, maybe. I don't know. He's a Georgia boy. <laughs> I love that. Famous Georgia natives. <laughs> That's Herschel amazing. Walker, Wolfgang Buck. <laughs> Gladys Knight. Um, so uh, what that the hell else were funny. we talking about? How much did he get paid for that night? Oh, I would probably, probably I'd say he probably, has a uh, catering company. He gotta caters, be hundred k. He caters the Oscars, right? So he just 100K? his catering his catering company would come in and cater it. And it's make. such a you guys saw with the NFL thing, like all the players that show up are all selling something. This was my favorite oh, part, ra- Radio Row, right? Yeah, and and so and when they came on your show, uh, you guys were live from the Super Bowl. Remember, I came and watched, and I was heckling you guys. That's yep. right, I remember. Uh, fun. So they all have a product. That's the only reason they come because yep. the some company pays them fifty grand to go down and mention their product in all these interviews. Right? Did you guys get? Told you had to mention the product when yes. the NFL oh, yeah. guys came out? Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's my favorite. Kirk Cousins is down there, and he is representing uh, some mattress, one of those sleep things. Have you heard the sleep ones, and they, they rate your sleep? Hey, I got a 70 sleep last night or something. It's on all the podcasts. And so, but Kirk Cousins, I saw him on three different things, Dan Patrick, a couple others, and he kept saying, they'd say, how, is, how, do, how do you reflect on the season? He said, I haven't slept in a month. <laughs> And he kept, he kept saying that. I saw him on Patrick, and then and then Dan's like at the end, but uh, you must have slept okay lately because you're here to advertise whatever mattress is. And he's like, oh, no, yeah, I don't know. The last oh, few yeah. nights I've been sleeping. Yeah, everything's then then I see him then. on NFL Network. Yeah, I haven't been sleeping at all. He doesn't seem... He's a weird guy, Kirk Cousins. That. Yeah, he's a little strange. He's a, he's an interesting yeah, dude. He's weird. No, so it was good. You know, it's I, I I'm getting older. I lay low now. I I enjoy the nights in my room watching yeah. the Netflix. Did You're you, away from the fam. You can have a little James time. I know. Did you important. have a hotel near? Uh, you see that the parties the, you and see stuff because you guys are always a hundred yeah. miles away. Yeah, we're looped in. One of my uh, <laughs> my this. one of my problems with the NFL. Like, look at Canada's a big deal. We pay a lot of money for the rights, but they loop us in with the international. Media. No offense to TV Azteca and TV Peru and you all this. Are, you very much mean to offend those people, but yeah. go on. By the way, how much time is left in the oh, game? Because yeah, I do have check. to do a uh, post game. Like 10 minutes. Okay, okay. we're good. So, um, uh, so this will be the secret now. All your listeners will know that I haven't watched any of the game. And I just say, <laughs> going, what a third period. Bob, your thoughts? <laughs> That's basically what I do most of the time. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, uh, oh yeah. yeah. So, like, hotel. we're in the hotel. Like, these two Mexican guys had hand puppets. <laughs> For nine years, they showed up at the Super Bowl with hand puppets. That's how they did all their interviews. And, like, in their, they little have a hand, little hand puppet to say, Tom Brady. I'm sorry, I can't do it. And I, I don't mean to offend any Spanish no, no, people. But, on. Tom Brady, what do you think? This is Harvey. And, and, and. and and, it's uh, like the first year of the NHL and TSN. That's exactly. <laughs> so, like every time I'd ride, I'd get on the shuttle to go to the media availability, and these two Mexican guys would be practicing their hand puppets, and you'd have like a blogger from Peru or something, and that was my life. And we get stuck uh, at the like we're at the airport Marriott, which was fantastic <laughs> for when we landed and when I took off this morning. So, okay, by the way, I took a cab today because I was worried my Uber and the guy at the front door says, you better book a cab tomorrow. You're not going to get one day after Super Bowl. So I say, okay, book me a cab. Airport Marriott to the airport, <laughs> 2875. <laughs> 2875. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So that's my uh, that's we great. we end up in that the boonies, great. which kind of cuts into the uh, cuts into your party life and everything you guys like that. N- never you said to them, your- like, can we be in the action yeah. one year? Talk yeah, to the powers that be. I think. Well, next year's Miami. Yeah. So I'm gonna go to uh, Nicole, our, our fixer, our Mr. Yeah. Wolf, and I'm gonna go to Maddie, one of the two Maddies, our travel bookers, and I say, just book us the Westin in downtown Miami right now. And so we're there. Or better but, yet, uh, the Fountain Blue in South Beach. I, then I, you're rocking parties every night. I saw a friend of mine, Brad Fay, who works for another television network. What a guy. He's and a great I'm like, guy. where are you guys staying? You don't have rights. Uh, we're at the Sheraton downtown. <laughs> <laughs> great. That's so maybe awesome. that is the key to not allow the NFL yeah, to just book don't, your just accommodations. Book, book your own place. Do your own right? thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, you can do that. Yeah. So free yeah. breakfast, though. Uh, you I got a goaltending s- change in the Leaf game. Chad oh, just Johnson to, is now in for the Ducks. That's Anna, a bad sign. And I miss so bad. So Gibbons has lost the Vesna. Did you see our intermission? Bob McKenzie went down the entire roster, what everybody will be making next year and who will be on the roster to figure out the Leafs cap crunch. It was something to behold. Oh, really? He spoke for four minutes straight. 
about the everybody. Leafs cap crunch. About what every Leaf wow. will make next year and what they'll be on the roster. Matthews is apparently, by the time people listen to this, oh, you guys churn it out pretty fast. Christoph takes like nine days to churn out our podcast. <laughs> wow. After we tape Throw it. him under well, the priorities, my friend. Is the uh, Christmas one ready? <laughs> almost, almost, James. <laughs> Uh, Duffy, man. Hey, do you guys have a sponsor in your podcast? We got four sponsors, don't we? The lovely Waimara Resort in Turks and Caicos, (laughs) which Dan was going to try and take his family to, but I couldn't get him quite the rebate. (laughs) Uh, We have Untuck It, those wonderful shirts. Can we we go back to that for a second? So Dan has discussed this because I said, why don't you go to the Turks in this great deal that James has? (laughs) Uh, And Dan has now said that he's going to go to the Dominican. Well, I told uh, you, you... Maybe you didn't get him the same deal. <laughs> well, it's like O-Dog. O-Dog asked me the same thing. He's like, March break, get me a room. You know, he's not as... Dan asked me very politely in a text. O-Dog's like, March break, get me a room. So I, I'm like, I, I phone my buddy and I'm like, hey, do you have anything left? He goes, ah, we're looking, we're pretty much booked, but I'll, I'll get him, you know, I'll get him the rate and I'll give him like the, a 30% discount. <laughs> now, it's a nice resort. So it's March break. It's the, like the highest week of the year of besides Christmas. So it was 800 U.S. a night, something like that still, or 700 U.S. a night or something. That's nothing and, for tools. And I tell, I tell O, and he's like, no way. I'll go to Miami. I can get one for 150 a night. <laughs> So, uh, which I mean, that's why Toolsy went to the Dominican. Yeah. If, if you, I told you, if you go, Turks is to me the most beautiful beaches and stuff in the world. Uh, but the resort I stay at, like the Waimara, is a very beautiful resort. So it's a you know high end. It's got it's all the Drew gotta, Barrymore was there. You got to treat yourself to the good stuff. I do, and that's what I say, Toolsy. You work. You should mm-hmm. go again. And I told you where most of my money goes. The gambling table, the craps table. <laughs> Half goes to gambling. <laughs> Half goes to the ex-wife. So you've got that. You've got Untuck It. Who yeah, else do you life have? is good. Uh, we have Puckpedia. Uh, Puckpedia.com is your number one place Ooh. to go for salary cap information. Okay. And what else do we got? Untuck it. Untuck it. Untuck It. Untuck It. Puckpedia. Yeah. Um, I drink oh, IDrinkCoffee.com. Oh, I com. This oh. was a great one. I did an event last year. You guys do the speaking gigs. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it was a business event, so it was all these e-commerce companies. Sure. And so I, I said, well, this is smart. I'll just tell them about my podcast and see if I can get a sponsor. And sure enough, afterwards at the bar, uh, this incredibly nice guy comes up to me and says, I'll sponsor your podcast. Boom. IDrinkCoffee.com. Nice. The number one place for coffee. This is what we got to send Toolsy out to, because that's a Toolsy special. You guys got to work it a little more. We have yeah. no Well, no you have, I, I, have to, I had to work it. I'm like, uh, Jimmy's got to get out there and sell. Hmm. I'm like, it's like death of a salesman. Toolsy, that's Willy your Loman. job. Toolsy, you're great at that you stuff. You are. You'd be great. Yeah. No, that's why I just send it out there, requesting people to contact us. Yeah. He also the he also requests, Library. <laughs> they'd cash in like they'd give you like five bucks a week or something, wouldn't they? He also requests people to do his work, like uh, transfer old VHS tapes to digital, <laughs> which Christoph did for him this week, yeah, which was really very can we do done. that? Uh, I have a lot. I saw your. I watch your show. I'm a big fan of you guys. Oh, I listen to the thanks, pod James. when I can. Thank Sometimes you. when I'm working out, Ooh. I work out a little bit. Go on. I worked out with Jabari, Jabari Greer this week. That oh. that was a mistake. Did you? Uh, my wife she was. Uh, my wife was wondering about Milt. Did you guys talk to Milt Stiegel? Because he's from Atlanta. Milt was at the game. At I the know, game and I, I was going to text him, but then I mean, I got the oh. game. I want to make it do. Hey, Milt, I'll come over and say hi. And Milt, like, yeah, no, I'm too with good my for friends. the CFL guys. Get eh? lost. My wife would be upset. <laughs> no, I love. I love Milt. <laughs> was Jabari getting up? He gets up at five, doesn't he? No, no, but that's Milt. Jabari is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. He Jabari, is he's nice, in yeah. the gym at eight, but he pumps it hard. Like he, he's thinking about getting back and doing that uh, Masters track. Do you know Jabari was a uh, one of the NCAA's in the hurdles? No way! Didn't I did that. not know that. Yeah, Jabari, wow. you should have Jabari on the pod. He's a lovely man. I'd love to have him on. I guess he's probably not going to be oh, here for could, another six months. But can I tell you one other thing? I saw down there. There was a lot at the Super Bowl. My other impression: a lot of the um, the Bible folks with the uh, blowhorns. On the street corners. Sure, the Lord is big. The Lord was massive down yeah. there. But there were these certain guys protesting. It was a group of them. And they all wore white outfits with huge, I guess, paint, fake blood stains on their crotch. Okay. And they were protesting um, circumcision, how it was hurting all our children. Hmm. And uh, did you have your uh, son circumcised? I just did, yeah. Yeah, so just had him they flip. cry for 10 seconds and it's over. He, he, he fell asleep. Yeah, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it's, you're a child. I don't think there's any people in the world who have scars because of circumcision. No, no. And these people, 
That is the cause. I mean, I I am I love people who are passionate and have causes, but you're going to go out on the street corner, cover yourself in, in fake blood? blood on your crotch, and protest the circumcision, circumcision of baby. But maybe something <laughs> something went horribly wrong with theirs. That's true. Maybe they have mangled <laughs> peen. <laughs> They got the old mangled peen. <laughs> Imagine that. And maybe they got a late life circumcision because I could see that hurting a little bit. Oh, yeah. And no, that would probably. Right. But they probably put some freezing in, right? It's no different that's than the what old. He, that's what the doctor said he did to, uh, to our kid. Just uh, for, like uh, getting a cavity filled. Imagine the sales pitch. <laughs> the guy who comes up with the idea and he's like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Hey, hey boys, let's get this? together. Do you want in on this? <laughs> it has let's, changed my life. <laughs> to have a couple of Mick Ultras and go out on the corner. And have fake blood all over our crotches. So that was weird. You know, um, I could see when we eventually produced that television show about Joe Thornton's tiny friend. <laughs> I could see one of the episodes involving the tiny friend going out and protesting circumcision. <laughs> or, or just Joe and his buddies getting him drunk and circum- re-circumcising him again. Can you do double circumcision? If Joe, you already have it peeled down, could you peel it back one more? I don't think so. Can, can we... Develop Joe Thornton's tiny friend. It just seems like a show that, a that Canada's waiting for. <laughs> new canoe on CTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or crave. Um, well, James, feel free to share some sponsors. <laughs> you guys are very successful podcast. We are a niche podcast, but we have a very dedicated niche audience, don't we, Christoph? Amen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm impressed that you do a podcast with all that's on your plate. I'm impressed that you even bother. I squeeze them in between uh, the Turks and Caicos. So I'm bringing all the boys down to Turks and Caicos. We're going to do podcasts live from there. Maybe you guys could get in on that. that Come on. That is incredible. We have a, uh, we Jules, have a... he's so upset that he uh, he hooked his trailer up to my star. <laughs> well, we have a five-bedroom villa, and we only have uh, four members of the cast, so we might have a oh, contest guess, to see, to guess see guess who the fills price, the fifth bedroom. Guess the price of the villa that he gave me. Eight thousand a night. I told him. Eight thousand a night. <laughs> that's but not for, that's not for Christoph, for baby. All right. <laughs> I might barricade myself in that room. I'm just warning. You. I think I'm getting raised. No, great. look at. I'm so, getting. <laughs> no, look at. The villas are like they're. That's where the movie stars. Yeah. Yeah. When I I checked out of my villa and uh, Drew Barrymore checked in. Victor Hedman of the Tampa Bay Lightning was mm. was next door. It's where the big shots stay. But what happens is my buddy Bruce, who runs the Weimara. If the resort is full, resort. the resort. I let, <laughs> the resort. I, let, I tried to let that slide by. <laughs> if the resort is full, then uh, he'll he'll stick me in one of the villas. And so me and my lovely wife, my wife, um, we 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 got to stay in the villa, and it was as you saw. It was it's beautiful. Did you? Uh, Jeff, Make love? Some words. Well, that, I mean, I, I thought that's where you were going. I wasn't going to go there, My but if you, if you want to volunteer that information, yeah. that's fine. No, I was going to ask if you uh, had some interaction with uh, with Drew. No, so out a little bit? She, I left, she came in, and then you, you, some, if you want to, uh, they can come over and use the pool, the resort, if they want to socialize a little bit. So I was down on the beach, yeah. and Drew was by the pool. And I missed her because I hung out at the beach all day and I came back and my buddy Mike, who was drunk in the pool, was like, hey, Drew was in the pool. <laughs> so she was, it was pretty exciting. Drew! I wonder who Welcome I'll to see the pool. at my one and a half star resort in the Dominican <laughs> that I got for $800. <laughs> Heidi, Klum, Heidi Klum was down as well. I missed, I missed Heidi. Oh, man. Kylie Jenner, but she wasn't at our resort. I love the idea of Toolsy being in that fifth bedroom. You think so? Yeah. Crossover pods? Yeah. Come on, it'll be fun. Come on. <laughs> That would be great. When are you guys doing this? Uh, October. <laughs> it's not coming soon. Like it's <laughs> October. Okay, plenty of time Off for you season. to try to get better people yeah. and then eventually settle on. No, this. we would love to have you down there. How about we get like a hotel sponsor like Howard Johnson's? Hojo's. I'm in. Motel 6. Motel 6. They got coin. I'm fine. Holiday and Express. We'll leave a light on. I think that's their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How about the Atlanta Airport Marriott? <laughs> Where all the stars stay. Did you, uh, you and Hedman uh, crack some bevies? Uh, yeah, we hang. Yeah. We hang a little bit. I was hanging with those cats. <sighs> yeah. Okay, I think we're all going to leave now. <laughs> Do you want me to go? Uh, well, we're I guess only I, last, buddy. We're I'm on the air. Oh, how much is left in the game? Eight oh, minutes. It's actually oh. uh, 30 seconds. Do you want to get rid of me, though? This is kind of long. No, we're no, no we're, we're, I have a small. Oh, this is the end of the yeah. pod? Yeah, this oh, is it. Oh, because you have to do your show. Did you hear what happened tonight? No. What? We were about to do our pregame show for the Leafs, and at uh, two minutes before we went to air, uh, the audio board blew up. Oh. 
Oh, God, really? <laughs> and so we couldn't do the show. We all sat there and we went, oh. I so guess, what did they do? What ran motoring 2020? I think our poor friends at Sports Center. You imagine Corey C Dubs. He's like, yep, yeah, I'm getting off the air. Oh, yeah. And oh, no, you're going to do another half an hour. <laughs> oh, oh. No, I guess is, he would have probably been doing it on one of the other markets. Anyway, wait, right? Corey couldn't you guys have run up to that studio? Uh, it would have looked kind of goofy, the four of us sitting on the Sports Center pavilions. <laughs> so well, we, we kicked you Gino. Have done it. We kicked Gino out of his studio. He was bitter. He gets oh, angry. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. Gino has a lot of anger issues people don't really because realize. He, he, because every time you go away on one of your worldwide vacays, Gino's got to step in and do insider trading. Yeah. And I got to tell you. He does a hell of a job. You got to watch her over your shoulder, my friend. He brings he, the experience. Yes, he does. He's got the contacts. He does. Whenever I leave, you know what happens? You Patrillo comes in and does, and then I get all these tweets about, oh, "You look, the you look way better than you. Don't come back, <laughs> loser." By the way, I I noticed uh, Ray Ferraro because he kept tweeting about it, and so did Gord. Ray was over at Gord's house last night watching the Super Bowl. And they were drinking Barolo. <laughs> It's just a big wine fest with the, all the hockey guys. I know. Right? Just, I'm not. I, I I don't even pretend to. I like the wine, but I, I love when Bob posts understand. pictures of the label. <laughs> you know? know, and then Mudrick's like, "Send some to the booth." <laughs> it's like, guys, <laughs> dial it back. We get it. You like wine. It is true. Eh? Meanwhile, Jay and I, we send texts to each other. Hey, found a really cheap bottle. Oh, totally. It's nine dollars. <laughs> so I'm I'm right with you guys. Trust me. <laughs> I try to pretend like I know sometimes. Uh, no. The odd time I'll be with people and they'll, uh, people who are, like down in Turks as a matter of fact, I have like a rich friend who lives down there and we went out on a on a boat and Jose Schwinard was there. It was really weird. Oh. Lovely lady. <laughs> oh yeah. Lovely lady. Sure. Was she in But they're like, the James, time? you picked the wine tonight, right? And this guy's like, I don't oh, know, no. he's got like 25 mil in the bank and Jose's got some rich husband and I'm looking at him going, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Argentinian... <laughs> Cab, is that is that up to standards? <laughs> I have no freaking idea. <laughs> I just buy J Lore or something. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have an uncle who just he doesn't look at the at the actual description of the wine. He goes to the prices and he just goes down the <laughs> the wine list. And then as soon as he finds the cheapest wine, he's like, "I'll take that." Yeah, that's yeah. Basically, you me. do the not the cheapest. You do the not the most expensive. You do the <laughs> just above the cheapest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you look like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, We've had some fun uh, here, guys. I missed you guys. Yeah, we missed you too, you buddy. Know, we got to get you on more often. Remember the time, Dan, when Jay was away in the original podcast where I came on and I didn't really know what a podcast was? <laughs> yes, I did. And do. you were just going all over the place and I was really confused. We're, yeah, you we're were trying to keep the train on there. the track. Yes, we were back there. Yeah. But I owe you guys. The only reason I did a pod probably is because uh, you guys and I told that stupid rubber boot story. It was a great and story. everybody liked the story, and so that's why we're called the Rubber Boots Podcast, which is probably the reason uh, we're not that popular. Because <laughs> anybody goes on iTunes and they're like, "What the hell's a Rubber Boots Podcast?" It's better to we're be a coming, cult favorite. I like that. That's the way we are. Better to be a cult favorite. No, no I well, think no, it's we're doing a raging really well. success. We're a raging success. <laughs> You're raging something. Yeah, <laughs> I am right now. And uh, I'm glad you gave such a sales pitch for Atlanta. People are really <laughs> flocking there. <laughs> Travel Atlanta. That'll be your next sponsor. The weather was wonderful. Danny, they called the snow day on Tuesday. This was great. They called the snow day. There was a threat of a centimeter of snow. Oh. It didn't snow. It was sunny and 10 Celsius in the <laughs> afternoon, and all the schools were closed. Yes. Oh, I gotta move to. Did a Did you see our like good that. buddy C.J. Nitkowski? Uh, I did not, but I saw no. who's the guy you always say the nicer guy, the NFL guy. Oh, Mike Garofalo. So I saw him at the availability, and I was gonna go up and get a picture taken with oh, him, and then I thought ah, that would just be weird. No, no, no he, he would love it. it. I know, but I just I I don't know. Oh, I get would... shy. I get shy in public uh, yeah, places. I get it. It's I asked a question at the Belichick news conference. That went really well. Oh, really? What did I you went? Ask the, I was in the front row, and I'm like, uh, James Duffy, TSN, Canada. <laughs> um, I said, oh, I'm going to ask a three-pronged question because I figure, you know, I won't try to be too smart because he doesn't like that. Uh, um, your, your running game, you've established a, that really smash-mouth running game this year. Uh, did that happen organically? Uh, how how uh, important has it been in your success, and how important will it be Sunday? This is Bill. Um, uh, run, pass, both equally important. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you said organically, you lost. I got. I mean, I, maybe I didn't say organically, but I, I got up and walked out. That was my protest. Good for you. That's a, like, screw honestly, you, Bill. That's brave to, screw ask, you. to ask him anything. Yeah, it's like I'm asking sorry. Popovich something. It Just to ask well. it. That's brave. It didn't go well. What do you think of Mark Masters' shoes? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think the fact that it it can become a a major thing a in thing. scrums is I don't know. I the guess fact that, that Randy Carlisle, Randy <laughs> Carlisle, the most humorless man of all time. Good Made one, Randy. About it. Randy. Randy's boys give up nine to the Jets, <laughs> and Randy's making jokes about master shoes. They I lost love it. fifteen of about to be sixteen of eighteen. Yeah. Uh, I Randy. actually can't believe they're quite this bad. I know they're banged up, but I got a bunch of guys it. coming. They've decided to give up up on this year and keep the guys down in I think San Diego where they play. And uh, boom, next year they'll have six or seven new guys on the roster. And mm. Getzlaff and Perry will just sort of transition into retirement. I guess it's. <laughs> you know, what? I love grits. I ate a lot of grits down oh, there. Oh, me too. Grits are gr- they're so underrated. They're fantastic. Yeah. What are grits? Uh, they're you know what this has disappointed me because I was eating grits thinking that they were oatmeal or something with some this tasty oatmeal and that was kind of healthy for you. And then uh, Jabari told me that grits are crushed up corn, and corn apparently is not supposed to be so good for you these days. So, oh, you know, on the oh health. yeah, because they were hitting the corn syrup yeah. stuff on the uh, on the ads. Yeah, corn no syrup good. took a kick in the yeah, nuts on yeah. Sunday. Corn's no good. No bud. But grits are so good if they the, put cheese in them. Taking and... the corn syrup out of the bud. Yeah, I think they're overthinking all this. <laughs> Danny, can't, next... can't we just have funny commercials? Without a message? I didn't see any of the commercials. I Actually, I saw the big the NFL, NFL one, one at was, the banquet. They, that showed, that, they showed that in the stadium. It, you so know that what? Was that was so good. I remember like 20 seconds before it ended, I remember thinking, if they ended this Let's Let's say 252? This would be great. Uh, 353. Okay, Boom. Yeah, Not go. even close. Looks like you need LASIK. New, <laughs> new sponsor. I can't see it all. That's the first boots. thing that went really? on me. Yeah. Uh, my, eyes, my eyes are... Yeah, my, mine are going too. Far vision. Far but did you, ca- Stoff, can you pull up just before James goes the picture of Dan with the glasses when he was uh, in Fort McMurray? Where would, you, where would you pull it up? What do you got? Right, right on here. that screen there. Oh, Take a look at Toolsy with glasses. Boom. How about that? My daughter wants to FaceTime. Right. i got to go on the air and I say, you want to FaceTime right. with my daughter? Live on the podcast. That's say, a say hi, Gracie. Question. Hi, Gracie. This is really good podcasting, too. Hi, Gracie. Yeah. Okay, I gotta leave. I gotta Did talk to my daughter. Did you get into college, Gracie? No, no, she's 15, Jay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gracie, where are you going to go to school? <laughs> Where? Where? Stanford? Stanford? Stanford. Oh, yeah. Stanford Community College in Barrie. Rich, Richard <laughs> Sherman went there. It's a great school. Thank you for having me on, guys. Thanks, I got to run do some TV. Thank you very much. Okay. I miss you. Love you. All that. Thank you, James Duthie and Gracie Duthie. Good people. Yeah. Good people, the Duthies. Oh, that was fun. Because of our jobs and the hours we work, you see a lot of FaceTimes going on in the hallways here because you're like, people are saying goodnight and yep. you're... Yeah, so a lot of that going on here. Yeah, no, it's uh, we're very family oriented here at Canada Sports Leader. Well, that's it. Uh, that was a, a long podcast and a really fun podcast. I too. think we're right around an hour. We're good. All right. Well, I guess Dan's decided then. <laughs> I do have the performers from the NHL All Star Game in Atlanta. If you like, oh, Ooh, let's hear that. It? Let's hear that before uh, we go. Neo and uh, the uh, in the uh, rock band the Hives. The Hives from Sweden. Yeah. Hmm. I've seen them live. They're great. Neo was the other one? Neo, yes, the soul singer. Hmm. Ah, let's pass. <laughs> uh, well, that no was fun. No wonder they lost that franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next week, uh, this coming weekend, I'm going to Pittsburgh. So um, I can't wait for that. If you have suggestions, send them to me on Twitter uh, about that city. I can't wait till you get suggestions. Don't go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's all people said about Detroit. <laughs> thanks. See ya. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, to the Jay and Dan podcast. Our sponsors this week were... Uh, uh, <laughs>